now. Just a minute. Yes, we are recording now, just so everyone here is aware of it. Um, so before we start, I just would like to share with you uh, our goals uh, with this series of uh, online global events, right? We want to inspire, connect, and enable uh, a moot um, location audience of entrepreneurs, ventures, uh, organizations, and companies around strategic topics. Uh, so uh, we are really grateful to have you here and to start this series with attendees from the five regions of the world. Uh, so this is super uh, exciting. Uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, these first events, uh, online events that we are organizing, uh, will be more focused on topics uh, related to remote uh, work skills, uh, well-being in times of isolation, how to manage your business uh, in times of disruption, uh, so that we can make sure to enhance the support that we provide uh, to ventures and entrepreneurs at this particular moment. Uh, we believe in collaboration, uh, we believe in the power of communities, uh, and that's why we are here with you, so we can get through this together. Uh, and also here with us are our speakers uh, for this first edition, so let me introduce you to Rowena. Uh, Rowena is um, an expert in remote work skills, uh, and she will share her experience and knowledge with us covering topics like operational continuity and reality check, communications versus uh, collaboration online, uh, how to get started quickly and plan. Uh, and also she will share hacks, tips and lessons learned. Um, also here with us as a speaker, uh, we have our very own Leon uh, Reiner. Uh, he's uh, one of the co-founders of Impact Hub Berlin and he will share with us his uh, recent experience in moving a hackathon from offline to an uh, online environment. Uh, before I pass it on to Rowena so we can start, I would like to remind all of you about some housekeeping or Zoom keeping rules uh, for our meeting to go as smooth as possible. Uh, please, let's keep our mics muted. Uh, I will mute mine. Uh, soon uh, and our videos off as well so we don't overload the connection and all of us can hear the speakers properly of course the speakers will have both their videos and mics uh, on uh, if you have questions um, to the speakers feel free to use the chat to send them to us uh, we will be collecting them and uh, before the end of um, the session we will have some time for the speakers to address them uh, so with that, I think we are ready to start. Uh, Rowena, the mic is yours. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Edgy. Just checking everyone can hear me. So you've got a chat, universal symbol of OK around the world at the moment. Some of you who scuba dive might know this as well. Yeah, some nods there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is good. scuba diving, we've got that. Hi, Mike. Right, so if you could mute yourselves, and I'm going to start the first part straight away on a demonstration. Okay, so this is what's known as a virtual collaboration card. Okay, and I'll cover off other bits and pieces like that as we go. You have chat so that you can chat, and I have over... 20 questions that I'm going to try and answer as well. So thank you to the people who already um, tabled questions beforehand. I believe I'm going to deal with the majority of them during the session. About three quarters of the way through my session, I'll, I'll pass over to Leon for um, his story, his part, and then I'll wrap up again at the end and go into Q&A, okay, and, and cover some of the themes. So if you have other new questions and you haven't asked them, Please listen to the content, pay attention. I'll hopefully answer your question as I go. I'll do my very best. If not, I'll deal with them on the Q&A or I promise within reason that I will get back to people afterwards, okay? So we could, there'll be a way of tabling questions afterwards. So just to keep it interactive, I'm on my own here in Zaragoza. This is the highlight of my day. Can you say hello? I'm 17, 18 days in isolation in Zaragoza. So can you say hello on chat? So we start the human connection. Okay, so everyone knows where chat is and I'll start sharing my screen. You might wanna say hello from the Netherlands, hello from 
Portugal, wherever you may be, okay? Fantastic, love it. Hello everyone, hi from London, hi from Brazil. Right, let's get going, brilliant. So it's, for some of you who've maybe done webinars, I'd love to see a bit of your chat and your reactions. I can see them, I've got the, the slide or the part on my screen where I can see your chat and your comments. So by all means, if you agree with something I say, if you wanna validate it, or share more with the community that are online here, please do so. And hopefully we'll see hello from Madrid, Armenia, fantastic. Fantastic, you're very, very welcome. Benvenidos, um, as we say in Ireland. Okay, so you've got three languages there to contend with, but I'm going to do the presentation in English. All right, for everyone that's attending. So welcome to this first of the series of live with the Impact Hub, so I'm delighted to be launching it. You'll see my name there. There's going to be a resources sheet. If you want to find me and connect with me, please use LinkedIn. I generally can answer quick questions there. I'll be covering 20 to 25 minutes, then we'll be going on to Leon, and we should have a good 15, 20 minutes for questions afterwards, okay? I'm going to spend a couple of minutes introducing myself. So I am a remote work skills expert. I've been teaching um, remote work skills for two, three years with a university in Dublin. And you can find more about me on my website. I go under Row Remote because everyone <laughs> calls me Row for short. And in the spirit of what we're doing today, in the spirit of me doing this uh, webinar. I also wanted to tell you in the 16, 17 days of lockdown that I've developed a new site, which is free of charge with a collaborator of mine. We're both, we both dabble in the so social entrepreneur space, like a lot of you, and we've developed Remote Worktree. And Remote Worktree is a resources site for remote work skills and tips and tricks and articles remoteworktree.com. So a little plug on that there because a lot of you who asked questions, um, you can find the answers on that site. So I'd like to point you to there and to my own site to start with. Okay, I'm gonna move on and start covering off the content. So I just um, want to repeat again that you can use chat to validate anything I say, but you can also put in some positive comments in there to share with everyone that's listening. So let's go through the, the context. It's a roller coaster ride for everyone. It's been a very difficult few weeks for me. I've been remote working since 2007. I've been teaching the skills for about three years with the university. And I've been working fully remote for three years from Spain to international clients all over the world. But this is not remote work like I know it. Nothing has been predictable in these last few weeks. My work and life are normally slightly separated <laughs> as an understatement. Normally, I don't have um, a small child in 20 feet away from me being homeschooled. She's normally at school. And my husband works in the Impact Hub in Zaragoza. So a shout out to anyone who's tuning in from Zaragoza. I sometimes work in another local hub, co-working hub, and I sometimes move around to cafes. I have a small home office. I am not in my home office today. I am in a corner of a bedroom hiding away from the noise so that I can do my work. So the first thing I want to say to everyone listening and based on the questions I've gotten, that it's been a roller coaster ride for me as well. It's been difficult for lots of people who are experts and experienced in remote work because this is not planned remote work. This is emergency remote work. And I need to make sure that you're all very clear of that. And I also need to make sure that you empathize with yourselves personally on self-care and also with the wider community that you're in contact with your colleagues and, and teams and as managers that are listening, that we start with empathy. There's the operational continuity versus the actual reality. There's people trying to homeschool. There's people trying to just get through the day because they don't deal with isolation well. So I want to make sure 
that when we talk about that, we are aware that everyone is in a difficult transition. Globally, as we're speaking to and dealing with lots of people, some people are further behind in their stage of coronavirus and their experience of the pandemic. Some of them are on their first days of remote work or work from home. Some of them are further along. So we need to acknowledge that transition and we need to acknowledge people's daily lives and the reality within that. So that would be one of the first things I would advise. So I've got 20, 25 minutes to get across to you some of the key skills and hacks and give you some tips. And I've tried to do that in about 10 slides. And I want to make sure that we've lots of time to hear Leon's practical story and also to ask questions. So if I had to summarize it, I would start with these four things, four things. Starting with self-care and empathy. A lot of the questions I even got from people before this event I could tell that they were in themselves, perhaps stressed. <laughs> Things like, how do I juggle work-life balance? How do I handle distractions? The tone of the questions <laughs> would lead me to believe that they are very stressed by trying to work from home in not normal circumstances. So my first thing that I always recommend is start with yourself. And why have I got um, the headphones on there? Because I like to listen to classical music and some simple meditation podcasts. And when I look at those nice <laughs> headphones, they make me think of relaxing. So I want to start with that. We need to take care of ourselves first and show empathy for ourselves. Then we can take care of others. In English, if you're ever on a plane, it will say, put on your life jacket yourself and then take care of others. And that's what I want to all start, all of you, uh, to ask you to do please because that's the best place to start routine it's a massive issue at the moment because the routine is gone for many people they're not able to go out to work to the hubs they're not able to go to physical their physical office spaces they're at home so trying to find that balance between work and life is very very difficult and I'm going to cover off some tips on that as well okay and how to deal with that but re routine is the key. And after starting to take care of yourself and checking in with yourself and showing yourself empathy, routine is the key in terms of managing these next few days. And that's all I'm going to ask you to do and recommend you do and <laughs> suggest you do. Take one day at a time over the, these next few days to try and find a balance between routine and also the balance you need between your work and your life which are now entangled with the current situation that we're in. I am going to move on to the next one and I'm going to ask you to trust in your community okay and trust in your team. So what do I mean by that? I'm part of the overall, I work for Stone Soup Consulting which some impact members uh, may know as well. I'm a freelance consultant with them. I'm part of that community that does a lot of social impact work. You have a fantastic community in your hands at your fingertips at the moment through the Impact Hub Global Network, through your individual networks at your different hubs. Believe in them, believe in your teams as well. If we look at best practice in a remote companies that are established around the world, the premise, the foundation is trust. And some of the questions I were asked about how will I manage my team? How will I, you just have to trust them to start with. You also need to be aware, as I said already, they're going through a transition, but you need to give them the benefit of the doubt, as we say in English, that they will take that trust and that they will move on and start to work when they can and productivity will, will begin to come back in. You also need to trust that the community around you, like myself as a representative, will support you. I will be providing a resources sheet and so many of the fantastic resources, some of which were previously paid for, are now free for the whole world. And so there's lots and lots of things out there for you to easily access, lots of resources, how-to videos, e-learning courses. I also can give you, if you need it individually, a small social entrepreneur companies and enterprises, I also can pass you on to Portuguese, Spanish speaking, experts, remote experts who are offering their time for free on 20 minute calls back out to the community if you were really struggling with operations. So I'm just going to stop there for one second and check into the chat. I'm also 
Um, I'm also going to ask whoever's on video to turn it off, if that's all right. I see someone there who's wearing a yellow fleece. Can I get you to turn that off just because it's flashing on my... Yeah. Okay, so, um, and lots of hellos, brilliant. And I'm seeing a couple of other comments in there. That's great. So your community is there. Trust in your community. And some of the examples I've already given you, I also want to use the word creativity and, uh, and looking for solutions. And as social entrepreneurs, you're really good at that. So tap into it when you're ready. Give yourself some time, like I've said, because we're all been twirled around on this roller coaster. But trust it will come back. Trust in yourself. Trust in the community. It will come back. And then the last thing, so I was only giving four and I'm thinking of all the different questions <laughs> you asked me, the 20 odd questions. What would be the first thing I would tell you to spend time on, on a, going near a computer? Now those first three things didn't involve loads of tech tools, only this last thing does. And it's one of the most easy tech tools to master. It's a video love affair <laughs> I'm suggesting, okay? And I have a child here who's interacting with a video. So video can do amazing things if you know how to use it. Video is facilitating today, all right? Video, you can share screens, you can record, you can generate notes from videos, depending on the different functionality features of the video tool you've got. A lot of the questions I was asked beforehand, the answer would be video, okay? But video and the use of video, that's okay with your teams. Now you are, all of you are very good already at interacting and communicating with your teams that you work with in general. So if, to figure out what type of video to use, you need to experiment with your teams, discuss it, and also agree to learn the new features and functionalities. If you wanna mimic the 100% remote companies that are successful, document and agree those things. And I'll come back to this a little bit more in a minute. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. All right, so number four, that was video. So let's come back to where we are all today in this emergency versus planned remote work. And I mentioned, hola, Merche desde Barcelona. Lovely to see you, thank you for joining. I mentioned empathy and self-care, but I also want you to also consider adjusting your expectations slightly because we often find under stress that we have high expectations and we can't meet them and what happens is if you can build your routine slowly and carefully over these next few days in remote work routine land that will help you okay that will help you to start to get control back over that day-to-day -day routine and also balance the work life okay so I've put in build your routine, but I've included the downtime. So that's the one action I'm going to suggest to you. One of the first actions, leaving, right? The session today. Okay, so that will be one piece of advice I would give. And that, will, that answers a lot of concerns that were tabled. And then your workspace and your, and your time and your routine within that. So many people, and I already said to you, <laughs> I'm working in not an ideal location. I've had sore shoulders and a back like many of you. My answer to that, if you haven't got perfect ergonomics, is get up and stretch, take many breaks. I stretched and went for 10 minutes and walked around my apartment in Zaragoza before this session, really important. So to answer in terms of ergonomics and coming back to your workspace ready to go and being as comfortable as possible, lots of breaks. Use a timer on your phone for your breaks if you need to. Demarcation in English, breaks or breaking work and life from each other. It's really difficult at the moment because we're entangled. But here are some tips for you. And a lot of these are from experts. Shower in between leaving work and going into your real life. Change your clothes or change your shoes. And if some of you can get outside to another part of a building, a garden, whatever, also do that, okay? You need to demark between work and life. And I know that's very difficult for people in small places and small buildings and small flats, but I would really recommend it. So to break that workspace and time, you need to break between the two things. And lots of remote workers like myself would go outside to break work and life. So I would go to collect my daughter from school. I would go to the park. I would go to an exercise class. 
and then I would come back uh, home and that would break work and life. That is the way you break it down. You need to find what works for you now. So I strongly suggest you come up with creative ideas. The changing shoes is a good one. Maybe a shower, whatever works for you that you can move within your limited space. Um, move within your limited space between your, your, your two spaces. Yes, I'm happy to provide the slides for someone who's um, asked. They will be available and the resources sheet, no problem. Um, just in case you missed it. So find your rituals. Now, what other little rituals have I got? So I'm gonna share with you my props. This is my little candle that I light. This is, um, I like smells, okay, because I'm all about all the different senses and I'm in actually quite a small space. So I spray some smells. So I do small, this is essential oil, um, mint and water. I do small little things like that to get back into my work from being out with children, from being out in life where I'm distracted. So lots of you asked about distraction. One other recommendation is to notice what works for you moving between work and life and back in again. What has given you a boost? So I'll share another tip with you. I like to listen to classical music, like I said. So sometimes when I come back in here and I'm not ready to work, I swing round the chair, look out the window and listen to classical music for five minutes, okay? You need to find your rituals and what works for you. A tip within all of this is journaling or writing down. Now, as social entrepreneurs, you should have heard of this. I'm hoping that it's something because you're creative, you already do. Maybe you doodle, maybe you draw, but start to notice what works and write it down, okay? And then this leads me on to celebrating what's working. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a psychology hack now. And I've got the girls smelling smelling the flowers, uh, the picture on there to make you think of that. First of all, what is working for you over the last few days, whatever period you've been working from home, working remotely, what's working? Write it down and enhance it. Are you doing video calls that are working? Are you getting up early in the morning, perhaps? Suggestion, some people with kids do that. I've been doing it. Um, is there other little things that are already working? Now, I had some questions from managers about this, about enabling and supporting teams. Managers that are listening, team leaders, these are the kind of things that you can do with your team. This is a good idea for supporting collaboration at the moment and social interaction in your team. After so many days where you've all been virtual or remote, get them all together, have a little drinks or coffee call and ask them what's been working for them and get people to talk and share about what's worked. Sandra that's just asked me, yes, this is being recorded and I'm happy to share, share the, the slides afterwards. Enable success by starting to look at the positive. Okay, and then continue on that theme. So what I mean by that is, if you can find a couple of positives that are working, and I'm sure if you try, you will, and if you do it amongst your team, your colleague, colleagues, then write it down, celebrate it, keep doing it, enhance it. But this is a hack for everyone for managing productivity, okay? Managing productivity, you need to start finding small, things that you can do in small spurts of time. And I want to give you that advice from the heart because I've been working in really small amounts of time recently. This week hasn't been so bad, but the first week I never, in lockdown, I never got more than an hour. I've been delivering nonstop webinars. I, so I had to find a way of really getting good, okay, at delivering and preparing my slide decks. So I broke down the tasks. I broke down the tasks. So for example, I would write some notes on the slide deck on a one pager, and I would get that, that done in 10 or 15 minutes. And I'd say, well done. <laughs> I would go and have my lunch and I would feel I'd achieve something in the morning, even though I had small parts of time. So you need to set achievable tasks, acknowledge when complete. Okay, so I'm going to, I've only got a few more slides to go, so I'm going to stop here. So a little bit of chat happening, that's good. <laughs> um, 
is the separation of work and, and the rest of your life for some people and not from others. Okay, so one person, Belinda says that she loves, the, she likes the mash of work and home. Good for you. So you obviously are good at context switching. That's the term, Belinda. You might want to write that down because that's something that makes you a good remote worker. But some of the rest of us, depending on the distractions, might have to learn to adapt to that. Um, the separation depends on what you're trying to achieve. Right? Okay. Celebrate the small achievements. Okay. Mike says he also loves not a work. Fantastic. I'm delighted. Okay. I'm delighted. So good for you. But you should celebrate that. Okay. And if you're working on teams, share that because that will help you celebrate what you've achieved and then also also give some tips to other people because the other people might might want to say but celebrate it as a team okay as well talk about it as a team i think that it's something that you can bond with and the achievable tasks and as yes that's re it's really important you feel frustrated we all do at the moment um exactly now so if you all get a pen and paper and write down three or four takeaways <laughs> there's mine that's always beside me Okay, three or four takeaways from today and take down one thing that you're going to change after this, then that's something I feel that you've all achieved from this session. So fantastic motivation there. Okay, every part, make every part of life truly enjoyable. Some great advice coming through on the chat. So I really appreciate your interaction. Say that nothing, <laughs> um, Angela. That's a really interesting thing, okay? Because you, I've noticed amongst my peers, because we've been quite busy, the, the remote work community has been busy, and people have been commenting on how productive they've been. And Angela, I think you've hit the point there, because I'm really good when I have a deadline. If my deadline is not clear, I'm not so good. So that, that's one of the things. Um, Belinda's also saying that she writes down what she's achieved in her calendar, it's helpful. And then some people say every day is merging together. I, I know that. It depends on their experience. Um, some people think the separation is important. Again, again, it's going to be different in all your groups you're trying to work with now and all your teams. But situations like this, opportunities like this to discuss it, I think is a really good idea. And it's something that some of the managers or the leaders can take away from today. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to move on. This for me is one of, is a really, really important thing. And I hope these pictures, having my glass of water, staying hydrated as well. I think these pictures sum it up, okay? And the second picture um, is also uh, very apt at the moment because of the amount of homeschooling that's happening at my house at the moment. Um, on the left, we've got communication, writing an email, writing a note, sending a message. Um, and then the, the on the other side we've got true collaboration okay so i want you to go away thinking about what's the difference between communication and collaboration and i'll tell you so if i was preparing this slide deck today with leon who's going to be presenting to you in a minute if i was preparing with leon and we were, were working up the detail together we could send each other's emails over and back versions of slide decks probably would take a week or we could jump on a video call, share a screen, do the edits together, right? Make some notes in chat on whatever, Skype or whatever we're using, and move along the versions quicker. That is virtual collaboration or remote collaboration. It's going to be different for all of you, depending on what you actually, <laughs> what you actually use to do your day-to-day -day jobs, okay? Some of you will use certain software, some of you will use um, a method, Maybe you're very reliant on meeting together to discuss those things. So there's going to be a transition, but please go away thinking creatively, and you are all creative as social entrepreneurs about collaboration. There are lots of hacks around collaboration. So if Leon wasn't on the same time zone as all, at all as me, and he wasn't available, I could take the slide pack, start it, record a video of my logic and my sequence, send it to Leon, he could make his edits, record a video and send it back. That is also facilitating collaboration. 
we need to work to facilitate that collaboration. And this is normally one of the biggest sticking points for newly remote people and teams. Because first of all, operationally, they're not ready to go to that level of collaboration. So that is one of the things I want to recommend <laughs> to people, that you look at how you use video, how you can use other tools. I had some questions about whiteboarding and different other tools like that or brainstorming. I will put them on the resources list, list. There are some free tools out there. You have to test and trial these. I can't give you an answer because I don't know your teams and I don't know the individuals on your teams and I don't know your culture in your teams of your way of working. But what I can tell you is there are lots and lots of fantastic resources on collaboration, but you have to test and try them out. And you need to be open with your teams as a leader about doing that over these coming weeks. So that would be my recommendation to be open to testing out collaboration and moving on. So um, I'm going to stop for one second here now because the time is ticking on and I'm, I'm coming up um, to some featured questions, which I think I've, I've nearly answered. OK, and then I am going to move on to Leon, but I'm just going to quickly check the chat and have uh, a quick dr drink of water. Um, OK, and I'm also going to just say uh, to Eddie or Lola, if there's anything in the chat they want to repeat back, if they could take a look at that, because there's some great um, conversation. So to wrap up and give good time for Q&A and for Leon, I'm going to summarize right, <laughs> as best I can. Um, so get your routine down. Look at getting small bursts of work if you have to done. Celebrate achievement and break down tasks to small, manageable chunks of work. It's your space. Make it your own. Even if it's sitting on a, in the corner of a room, get little things that make you comfortable. All right. And look at how you can make the space more comfortable. I have some boxes here. The background, the backstage is not pretty. All right. Video, learn key functionality, sharing screen, recording right you can do that within a work process flow where you agree you don't have to be online at the same time okay start with really collaborating i know all of you could look honestly at your work and say how could i do that better right at the moment so start there and then on the resources sheet there are more tools more more ideas more ways of doing it okay um Keep reaching out for support. You've already done it. Impact Hub Global is supporting you. Keep doing that. My resources sheet will have lots and lots of free resources. Reach out directly to anyone who piques your interest and ask for their help. As I said, I can point you if you need to. Someone, you want 20 minutes structured free time. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that's, that's um, up to you. So reach out and I'll, um, I'll connect you. Some of the questions that were tabled, nearly my last point, some of the questions that were tabled were fabulous <laughs> from the questions that were submitted before this webinar. And they were all about the bigger picture, social leadership, will remote work stay? I've done presentations on remote work and sustainability, remote work and inclusion. These are fantastic questions. Um, if you need, I can give you leads for that as well. So anyone who's got this interest about Ping me on LinkedIn, message me. There's some fantastic narratives and free webinars now. So I want to keep that bigger thinking going because this audience of social entrepreneurs, you can make things happen. Okay. And finally, there will be the resources sheet before I hang o hand over to Leo. So I just want to pick up uh, one thing, <laughs> right, from someone at Impact Hub in Budapest. And it's a really nice way to finish off my piece before I go into Leon. And it's saying, Team collaboration is also important, but peace at home is also essential when there are more people in the family. So again, it's about that balance. And I think it's worth remembering that as well. So thanks for sharing that because that sums up that balance properly. So I've got my slide that introduces Leon. And I am just wondering if I will pass back on to here's someone to or I'll go ahead and introduce Leon will I yes no I, I can do that it's fine okay thank thanks you. oh thank you thank oh, you very much um, yeah so just to remind everyone on the call that if you have questions you can keep sending them through the chat 
Uh, we've had some great comments and as, as uh, Rowena was sharing. Um, and yeah, either like Leo can either address the questions as they come or we have some time at the end of the, the session uh, to go over them. So Leon, please, uh, the mic's yours. So hi everyone. Um, so I think I'll definitely not speak so long that we can't answer questions in the back. So I would definitely say we'll have, we'll have still some time after this. Um, so let me quickly say hi, I'm Leon. I'm from Berlin, one of the founders here at the Impact Hub. And I think um, my, my dear friends and colleagues invited me um, because we recently pulled off a big event online, the V versus Spears Hackathon. So, so maybe real quick what I'm gonna be talking about. So I think first, um, it's a little bit of a move because a lot of the tips that Rowena gave you, and thanks a lot for the input, I've made many notes, um, um, were also kind of like, how do you manage kind of your day to day? How do you stay productive? How do you stay positive? Um, whereas kind of my story on the front end more relates to how do I really translate business online um, or, or activity online, but I think a lot of the things that Rowena said and that I'll then come back to also really, really build on, you know, how you feel yourself. Because if you don't manage the remote work yourself in your business, you, you will never be able to do it. So I'll quickly tell the story of the hackathon and then I'll, I'll share a couple of learnings that I wanted to, to pass on. So via versus virus is very German. It means we, we versus the virus. So uh, about two weeks ago, it's only two weeks ago, it's crazy. Um, a couple of people in Estonia basically set up a hackathon in four hours to come up with new cool techie solutions to, to like get, you know, see this crisis, you know, in a, a create solutions for, for the, the problems that arise in this crisis. And I was very fascinated, I was very impressed. Um, and I, I thought we could do something like that um, at Impact Hub, but also in Germany. And I, I, I Twittered around with some people and, and soon enough, about you know, two hours on a Sunday, um, my phone rang and, and a dear friend and co-founder in a different company called me and said, Leon, um, I know of a couple of people who think exactly the same thing as you, can we, can we jump on a call? And I think maybe there is a first learning. And I think just because the world moves online um, doesn't mean you can't be in, you know, in contact with your friends I know it's also in front of the screen, but I think for me, it, at least it helps, you know, to speak to people on the phone, you know, call people, even if you don't have something concrete to ask them. And this is how this came about. Like we, I was just doodling around on, on my phone basically and, and, and went, went away. And suddenly I was on a call before the people who wanted to, to pull up a hackathon in Germany. And we thought, you know, why not? Um, and basically what happened is that one of the people was funded by our chancellery. So something like the white house in the U S so, or the, uh, the, the, the prime minister's office in the UK. Um, and she just told him about this idea we had and they were very, they liked the idea basically. And from there it took off. That was Monday. Um, by Wednesday, the government publicly and Gate like said, this is going to be the government's hackathon. And that's when things started getting really crazy. Uh, we ended up by starting Monday to work in a team of six, obviously all remote. Um, uh, by Friday, we had uh, the hackathon starting with a team of 100 people working remotely uh, from various teams and backgrounds and countries um, and about 50,000 participants overall. Uh, who were all on one Slack workspace, by the way, that we onboarded them into. Um, so I now have, I, I mean, a ton of learnings about how to facilitate large groups of people, but I think that's not the topic today. Um, I think what happened in the end is people are really, really drawn to opportunities to creatively tackle their situation and stay busy and interact with other people. And I think these are all things that you know, we offered with the hackathon. It was a, a way to engage with other people. It was a get way to use your skills in a positive way. You could do it from home. You could do it remotely. And suddenly, all these people in Germany who were, you know, stay at home people, all had something to do, something great, something amazing to engage in. Um, we ended up pulling out 
1,500 prototypes uh, from 1,500 teams. You can all see them online. I'll, I'll share a couple of links later. Um, we uh, are now creating a support program for the teams who came out. We just selected the 200 best teams. So it's, it's an ongoing thing. So for me, actually, through this, um, I'm in a crazy situation that with the lockdown, I have way more to do than I had to do before, which for me is super weird because obviously I'm moving in a place where other people are having to reduce their work, um, having, having like to kind of tackle with what they're doing at home. Whilst I'm going, like I'm, I'm desperate because I have so many calls that I, I just can't take it anymore. And it's a little, also a little bit weird. So um, the hackathon was a, was a great thing. And actually currently there's a hackathon happening in, in Switzerland by the Impact Hubs. The Impact Hub in Phnom Penh is starting one. So I think a lot of people are jumping on that train. And, and I mean, we, are, we were jumping on a train that started in Estonia. And I think it was, it was really, really great. And, and what I, I don't wanna go on too much about um, what ha all happened there. Whoever's interested in that, in the follow-up, I'll share a lot of links uh, with Edgy so, so, so she, she can share it with you. Um, but if you just want to quickly look on Twitter, hashtag beer versus virus hack, there is a ton of information um, that you can find. Uh, it's really fun also to see how the teams are working remotely. And what I wanted to share with you today, also in the light of the topic of this webinar, is a couple of learnings that we took away in terms of what works in creating a fun environment to be productive um, for all those 1,500 teams in the end. And the second thing is, um, how do you, what do, like, what did we learn about taking what we usually do offline um, online? So maybe first, in terms of what we learned about creating fun environments for teams, um, I think what we learned is that online remote leads more structure rather than less. So um, we felt that something that we do in our meetings is kind of check-ins, so having a little bit of personal time in the beginning on an online environment is so much more important because you don't have that moment before the meeting when you get your cup of coffee and just, you know, talk to people. So really, really making people check in and just say, hey, how are you doing in like two sentences? Uh, really, really, really worked uh, worked magic for us and worked, worked magic for a lot of the teams who had never done something like this before. Might seem a little bit touchy-feely in the beginning for some people who come from a tough business background, but I feel it really, really adds. Um, having a clear role of moderator, um, I think is really important in an online, even more important than a classic meeting, just because um, you need someone to uh, really facilitate the conversation and then I think a couple of really easy things like when you say something and you want someone to continue to talk, you nominate someone. So I think there's all of these little hacks and rules that you have to install to make an online meeting a success. And I think that's the next thing. And Rowena already touched on this. Really, really, really have a lot of online video meetings. Like if you're working on a presentation or even if you work on different things, like just keep your computer on with the video on, with all of your team on it. And if you have a question, you just ask, because it kind of creates that feeling of being in the same workspace. And for many of the teams that we work with, this worked amazingly well. Um, so more structure, create room for feelings, and, and also kind of really make, make use of those video things, of, of all those tools that are out there, and maybe really try to, at some point, select few tools that you then onboard the people that you work with into and stick with them. Like for example, for the hackathon, we made an early decision. We would use Typeform for all kind of like signups. We would use Slack uh, and we would use another platform that's called DevPost. But these were kind of the three things and obviously all kind of like video call tools. But that led to a point where everyone was able to learn how Slack actually works and then stick with it because every tool is a little bit different. So don't overburden yourself and your team and your colleagues with too many tools. Screen it, choose something, and then go with it. Because at the end of the day, it's not a tool, it's how you use it. And if you learn how to use it well, I think that makes the difference. Um, it's not which kind of chat tool you use. It's not if you use Zoom or Google Meet or whatever. At the end of the day, it's just how you use it. And I think being aware, I think in the tech times, you always think it's all about the tools, but it's not. It's about how you use them. And this is the same thing. We wrote onboarding documents for everything. 
So we wrote down like how to use Slack, what are the rules, when you have video calls, how do you do it, like writing every one down. And thank you, Rubina, for clarifying that Slack is an instant messaging system. Thanks a lot. So writing everything down to, to be able to easily onboard people and to also create reference for everyone. Like, you know, I'm, I might tell you this now, but where will you find it again to refer to it in two days when you can't remember and you're at home and you don't always want to like keep on calling everyone in your team to ask who remembers also. So keeping, creating these reference frames is really important, I think. So these, I think, were just a couple of the things that we, you know, more structure, creating room for feelings, um, and then also reducing the number of tools and concentrating on using them well. I think these were all things that, that really worked well for us also in a crazy number of people and then really writing down rules and making them known to everyone and explaining why they're important. Um, I think that was something that did magic. And I think it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a team of two, 10 or a thousand. I think these things really, really um, are important and also to kind of agree on them really. Um, I think that's also very important. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work when one person just makes them up and then they're there. It really makes sense to sit down together and, and say like, hey, we're in this new situation now. What are things that you feel are important? Collect them, structure them, and then work with that as a common understanding. Um, okay, looking at time, maybe a couple of things towards moving business because for us hackathons, like organizing hackathons as an impact hub, that's a business. We do that for partners, we get paid, um, and then participants join in. Um, I think, I mean, one thing that's very obvious is, uh, and that got very obvious, it's very scalable <laughs> and we never really believed in it. I, I can say that still Wednesday of that week, I was thinking that a thousand people would be crazy on the Slack channel and by Friday there were 50,000. Um, I mean, this was obviously only possible um, because we did that. No, we didn't get paid for the hackathon actually. Uh, we just did it as a, um, as a, you know, as an engagement, but we did, we do now kind of do follow on fundraising and are trying to basically find the funding to, to get paid to create the follow on programming. So for us, it was, I mean, we didn't do it like that, but retrospectively, it was also a huge business development opportunity. I, I wouldn't have ever thought that when we started working on it or even on the weekend, I didn't have time to think about it, but that's definitely what it turned out to be because obviously, Facilitate, online facilitating 50,000 people is a pretty good reference. I think even facilitating 100 people online is a really good reference that is you know, worth gold in these days. But I think what really helped us, and that's what I wanted to share because before we go over to the Q&A, is that what really, really worked with us for us is working really hard to translate the values and the USP that we have for people offline online. And this is really difficult. So the values that we have at Impact Hub are trust, collaboration, and courage. So in a, that meant for us in a situation like this, we took the courage to actually host an online hackathon, even though we'd never done it before. And none of the organizations who were on the organizing uh, team had ever done it before. We need, none of the people had ever organized an online hackathon before. No one. Two, um, uh, collaboration, I think really believing in collaboration and learning about it quickly and making it a priority for you and your team to learn how online collaboration works and then just being bold enough to like start doing it because I think learning by doing is what works best. Uh, and finally, um, the trust um, and like I think what we have in the Impact Hub community as is and maybe you also in your business, you have some partners that you work with, you have customers and I I do dearly hope they trust, you have a trusted relationship with them. Build on that trusted relationship to make clear for them that together you can also make this relationship work online. And if your business is, an off, is offline as an event, it, like you, can trend, you really can translate a lot with a little bit of creativity and the trust of your customer that it, it will work after the first and second time. Um, so really, really working hard to finding out what is that piece of USP that you can translate online and how to do it. I think that has really helped us. And obviously, it also meant letting go of a lot of things. Um, I mean, we currently, our, we are a co-working space and our space is closed. So obviously, there's a lot of stuff you have to let go of, but then use the, use what we, the, the time that you have to say, hey, how do we get our community engaged online? So we're now 
every Monday inviting our community to have coffee and cake together at 3.30. We used to do that in the space. Now we do it online. Everyone bakes their own cake um, and people love it because people are all, all alone at home. So really like trying to do it and being bold enough. Um, so I think I would um, cut it here for, for Q&A. We still have kind of 10 minutes to go. Enough from my side. Thanks for listening. And I would hand it over to, I think, Edgy for, for moderation or Rowena. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, both uh, Rowena and Leo, for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. I mean, I've been uh, working remotely for uh, quite some time now, uh, but I definitely learned from you today and wrote a lot of like stuff down. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we do have a few questions that we got um, on the chat. Uh, the first one, uh, I will start with you, Leon, since you were talking about the hackathon. We got uh, two questions. One is if you uh, can participate in the hackathon, if you have no hackathon experience. Um, so, I mean, the hackathon is over now, but if there's other hackathons out there and there's a lot of global ones happening, you can definitely, you can definitely do that. It is the common misconception that hackathons are only for programmers. Hacking something means solving a problem. problem. And every good team uh, has people from every kind of background. So no matter if you're an organizer, a designer, a programmer, or a business developer, you can always be part of a, of a hackathon team and you can make a very valuable contribution, just like in any offline team. And there is a lot of great hackathons coming up. There's a global hack. Um, I think if you just search a little bit on Google, you will find that there's tons of hackathons that you can attend and it's really fun. Uh, can I just add that I took part in my first hackathon as an expert speaker a couple of days ago, and it was called <laughs> It was called Hack Remote, hashtag Hack Remote, and it was how remote working for all you social entrepreneurs um, helps support the social uh, sustainability development goal number eight of decent work and socioeconomic balance. So you can also partake by offering services to support as well. There's a variety of roles. So just to let people know, just to investigate and get involved. It's the best way of learning. Nice. Um, thank you both. Uh, and we have one more question, which I think both of you can um, help us answer is how to reach potential partners remotely. I think you kind of touched that a little bit, Leon, but if you could expand a bit more or share your experience. Um, I mean, maybe two points. I think um, if potential partners is, I, I think this is referring to new partners. So I do think, I mean, creating a proof of work um, and invite, like for example, if you want to be a facilitator, like offering an online, like a cool online seminar and inviting people for obvious free, I think is a very good idea. I think there's someone on this call, it's Andrea Mörike. She teaches, uh, she helps people with sales skills and she has this cool thing where she just invites people for an, like an hour call and gives them cool sales tips. And I think, you know, that, that, you know, just showing people that it works without creating a boundary for them, like just do it for free. Um, and then, and then people see, oh, wow, this is valuable to me. Um, and then that, that will, I think that will get people kind of involved. And, and because I mean, it is like, if you're not used to this kind of thing, can someone like help me online? Like just offer it for free and then people see that it works. I think that's one thing. Um, and the other thing is uh, um, just really, do some research, find out who's, uh, who's, a, who's a good target partner, and then just contacting them on LinkedIn or somewhere else and asking them you know, how they're currently coping, how, how they're doing, what their problems are, and then maybe a little bit later coming to a point where you say, well, maybe there's one other thing I could maybe help you with. Can I offer you to you know, join my online webinar next week for free? And I think that's maybe a good way to, to start. And then if you need more sales tips, talk to Andrea Mörike. Thank you. <laughs> so there's Thank a few. You. Yeah, go ahead, Horina. <laughs> there's there's a few other questions coming in. I'm frantically making notes here. So anything we've mentioned that I didn't have on the resources sheet, I will add it in. So I'm going to add in hack remote. 
Um, I'm also going to add in Edgy. I don't know if you can gather some of these links that are coming through in chat as well. Yes, I am doing that. Fantastic. We're, see, we're collaborating very well online here <laughs> after knowing each other for about five days. Isn't that right, Edgy? <laughs> we're, trying to yeah. practice, we're trying to practice what we preach, everybody. <laughs> so, um, so we'll add them all into the resources sheet. There was a good question there about integrating homeschooling and remote work. And, and if you'd asked me that before coronavirus, I'm one of those people who works with a screen whose child gets very little screen time. But we, 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 um, I actually take my notebook and we write things together. She's only six. So when I'm writing up notes, she does her homeschooling stuff and I sit and I write notes at the same time. So my answer to that person would be to try and look for ways that you and your child or your children can, can work together based on paper rather than it all being on screen. And there is ways of doing that. So that was just what we've been doing in our house as an example. Thank you, Rowena, that uh, helps a lot. All right, so um, I'm carrying for the time here. So I'm gonna go to my closing notes. Um, uh, first of all, uh, one last time, uh, thank you so much. Rowena and Leo for joining us today and supporting uh, this important uh, initiative. Uh, I want also to thank again uh, everyone who, who is attending this first edition of uh, Live with Impact Hub. Um, in the next uh, 48 hours, you will receive an email from us with all the resources that uh, both Rowena and uh, uh, Leon shared uh, in this presentation and also some of the links uh, that uh, you shared on the chat, which was a great uh, collaboration piece. We copied all of them, so we will share those as well. Uh, and together with the resources, we will also share a short, I promise, short uh, satisfaction survey for you to fill out uh, so that we can get your feedback and improve uh, the next online events that we will do. Uh, and speaking of them, uh, please stay tuned on our channels for the upcoming editions um, of these events. The next two topics will be entrepreneurship in critical times on April 16th and managing business in times of disruption on April uh, 30th. We definitely hope to see you there. Uh, and last but not least, if you want to become a member of the Impact Hub Network or to col collaborate with us in different fronts, please contact the Impact Hub in your city or write to us uh, in the email address that you see in your screen. Rowena, if you can put the last slide, please, on. Is connect at impacthub.net. You can also write to us if you don't want to contact the Impact Hub in your city directly. Uh, so yeah, that's it from us. Uh, thank you again so much uh, for joining us. Um, as I said, all the resources will be shared, including the recording. Uh, please stay safe, uh, take care, uh, and have a great rest of the day wherever you are. And again, thank you so much for our speakers and for joining our session, everyone. Bye-bye.